This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So now that we've gone through and covered your basic earnings per share, let's go through and have a look at your diluted earnings per share because both of them need to be disclosed on the face of your performance statement. So that statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So what is your diluted earnings per share? Well, let's go back first of all to, to your basic EPS, which takes account of the current year's earnings and the current number of shares in issue based upon your, your weighted average and new issues at full market value, bonus issues and rights issues. Here, what there could be is at the end of the reporting period, there could be in position within your financial statements items that when future events happen will change the earnings and will change the number of shares. Now, what we're going to go through and look at here in terms of what goes through and dilutes, so it reduces your earnings per share, is effectively whereby we have an increase in the number of shares at some point in the future. And that increase in the number of shares doesn't directly translate to, to an increase in your earnings. Because if that's the case, and that's what's going to happen in the future, shares are issued and earnings aren't going to increase, then all of a sudden your earnings per share is going to be diluted. It's going to be reduced. And given that these instruments are in position at the reporting date and they will be converted into shares at some point in the future. We should go through there and alert to the shareholders that these instruments exist and therefore they will have a dilutive effect on the EPS and therefore work out what that diluted EPS is. So what we've got there is we have your convertible debt instruments. So we've seen that within the financial instruments chapter earlier on, haven't we? It seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? But when we looked at our convertible debentures, those debentures were to be converted at some point into the future into ordinary equity shares. So what will be happening in the future is that the number of ordinary shares will be increasing. There will also be an impact on the earnings, okay? Because when we convert the debt into equity, we will no longer be paying any interest. So, therefore, we will need to go through there and look at any interest savings. Okay. So, what you've got there is that your earnings will be adjusted by adding back any costs that will be incurred once the instruments have been exercised. So, here your post-tax interest on convertible debts. Okay, so you need to look at the interest saved uh, and therefore the extra tax that you will pay upon that saving. Okay, so the net interest after tax. Uh, likewise, we've also then got to think about your options. Uh, so when you're looking at your options, we, we haven't really seen these and you don't see them until strategic business reporting either in terms of the accounting uh, but options are very literal. It gives the holder of the option the right to take shares in the business at some point in the future. So it's very much uh, a reward for employees, a reward for directors, uh, for the work that they have performed within the business so as to try and incentivize them. Uh, directors usually get the shares for free. Employees might have to pay for them, but a much reduced rates, getting them at quite a heavy discount. Because then you pay for those discounted shares, but then you can readily convert them on the market to make quite significant gains. The issue that we have here is that we need to work out what are the number of free shares that are issued. Thinking about it from a, an employee's perspective effectively, whereby they have to make a payment to acquire these shares. But that payment is less than if they were to pay full market value. I think the best way to think about it is using the, the, the marketing tool of, of buying or buy two, uh, get one free, or, you know, more importantly, people see it as three for two. Okay, that's the way it tends to be advertised. So maybe you can get three books uh, for $10. Okay, now a normal book costs $10, let's just say. Okay, 
a normal hardback, normal paperback book cost $10. So if you were to buy two books at full price, you'll be paying $20. But if you're getting three for the price of two, you're effectively getting one book free, aren't we? So we can then think about that in terms of the shares. Now, how many shares are we getting under the offer? Uh, and how many shares would we get if we were to buy the shares at the full market value? And then what we do is we include within the denominator the number of free shares that are issued because they are going to reduce your earnings per share in the future, aren't they? You know, the other shares effectively that we've paid for, that's going to generate cash, that's going to impact the earnings. So hopefully if the business carries on as it does normally, then that wouldn't have an impact on the EPS. Hopefully it would increase, but we don't know what is going to happen. So here we need to work out the number of free shares. For the convertibles, if there are choices as to the conversion terms, we work it there in terms of the maximum number of shares that will be converted. Looking at, if you like, a worst case scenario. So let's just quickly think back to what we're doing. We're working out your diluted EPS. So we need to look at any future earnings that we generate. Uh, and we need to look at any future share issues that might go through there and dilute the basic EPS, so reduce it. The two scenarios that you're looking at in your exam are your convertibles. And with your convertibles, you need to look at the post-tax interest save and the maximum number of shares that can be issued under the instrument. With your options, you need to add in to your weighted average number of shares, the number of free shares that are issued as part of this option. That's the rules. The best way to go through and do it and understand it is, as always, with an example. So we'll see that within the next video.